Hello everyone again, I'm back to Gran Turismo 7 after a bit longer break than uh, than expected. I had a few things to do around the house, so I didn't come any closer, uh, can I, can I earlier. Um, so in preparation for <clears throat> that challenge I was, I was failing, the Alpine was killing me. I did some additional tuning changes to my DS. I reduced the weight. Uh, I bought the stage one. And I think I bought the racing intercooler. So let's see if I can actually achieve something more um, this time around. So I, even though I was uh, first once in that. Uh, the first race, I need to repeat it all. Uh, I listened to this guy before, so I'm not going to listen to them. Let's just start, let's try to race, let's see how it goes. that uh, weight reduction makes any difference to the outcome of the race. I won't have any more issues with the gearbox. It was surprisingly slow in that corner. Didn't expect it. That's uh, DS3, same as mine. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> can stick within, yes, even hit the wall. I'm a bit surprised that the Renault 5 is not quicker here. That's an iconic car. That Alpine is already driving away. So those two guys are the the guys who are portraits where portraits were available uh, to click on to to listen to what they have to say. That was one of them. Uh, the one I. Last name I cannot uh, pronounce, and that's the Lopez here in front. Too late on brakes. Mm -hmm. 
And here we go. It happens again with the gearbox. That's two times. Really annoying. Annoys the hell out of me. It's not a. It's not a cheap equipment. That fanatic gearbox. Things like that shouldn't be happening. Always happens when I try to upshift to four, and it downshifts to two. Okay, that was doable. Now I have to repeat that on the reverse version of that truck. But it was—it was just. It wasn't like I had a huge advantage. Or... to the next race same truck reverse layout of the truck same opponents let's start so again reverse layout of the Alsak truck I don't know what's the full name of the race truck let's start from the third gear Upshift just before, yeah. I was an upshift to third. It's exactly where I want to be. I wish I had a rear wheel drive here. Always better than front wheel drive. That's quite a high curve there. I think the Alpine is still behind two other cars. And of course it up sh uh, downshifted to second. Bloody shifter. He's overtaking those two cars there. first now and he will be driving away Peugeot 
208 GTI. Here we go. That's now behind me. That's why he's, he's slowing down here. Too wide there, but yeah, I'm in front now. Whoa! That was a big, big hit. Huge one. What the hell is he doing? AI went crazy there. This time it was a win. That car just needs a little bit more uh, performance points to allow me to race with that Alpine. Though I have a feeling that Alpine was really slow in that race, uh, that Peugeot was just uh, behind it on previous occasions. It's completely different. Okay. Some extra cash. So even though I was hit, I still got the clean race bonus. So it looks like uh, being hit by AI, like in this case, uh, doesn't count. Oh, okay. American muscle. Anyone will do. Uh, I did left, I did right, I'm going to the middle this time. I wanted to say I wanted Corvette. So happy. Such a great car. Oh, that was, uh, I was really lucky. Perfect. Yes, please. I want to use it somewhere. Hopefully they will give me some uh, muscle car race. Extreme section of the tuning shop. No, thank you. I cannot afford most of the parts there anyway. No replace. Go by. Exit. So that is book 11 or 12. I don't remember actually. Um, So first of all, <clears throat> let's go to the garage and I want to see that Corvette in my collection. Here it is, the collection of my cars. Let's go to United States of America, the home of muscle cars. Beautiful. Not the best color though, could have been in a different one. That looks like a British green though. But the car itself is uh, is beautiful. Uh, maybe one day I'll just go and read all of that. I see if there's anything interesting. But not while I'm uh, streaming. No point. Probably when I'm offline. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's check cafe. Nice work. You finished first in the Petite Course de France. Should now be able to access missions. Okay, that's something new. Visit missions to try your hand at various challenging and enjoyable race situations. Cool. In fact, missions will be the end of the next menu I've prepared for you. Perfect. Till then. Missions. It's interesting. They just put a circus tent there. 
So that was 12, now it's 13. Try your hand at a mission. Show me. Learn more. Missions are now open. Missions is where you can get a taste of racing in all sorts of different situations. For this menu, I would like you to give one a try. Go to mission, select the magic mountain to try your hand at Deep Forest, the pass. Sounds ominous. Get bronze or better, then come back here and see me. I will have a little reward waiting for you. Uh, okay, okay. And I unlock some trucks as well. Oh, I will. I don't know, maybe. Gran Turismo Live. I'm curious what's that. I'm not clicking that though. Missions is now open. So many things here to do. So what do we, we've got GT Auto. Can I actually wash that car? Driving gear. Some gear customization. Uh, but I'll do offline. I want to wash that car. I spent a lot of time racing it. Give it a good wash. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Clean like never before. It's in excellent condition, so I'm not changing anything else. Um, okay. Showcase. Uh, what was that? Ah, okay, so I can search for stuff here. Mm -hmm. Take on a challenging mission. Okay, let's do it. Magic Mountain. Ah, so they open with my collector level. Okay, cool. So that's the one they want me to do. Um, it's Nissan, right? 180 X. Um, all bronze, all gold gives me some rewards. 180 SX type X96. Overtake all cars by the finish line. Colliding with other cars will disqualify you from the mission. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. The forest. Um, a few things to do here. First of all, assists. Um, ABS off for that car. Manual, ABS off, the rest is off. Okay, let's try it. So there are three cars to overtake. Okay, fair enough. Starting with the third gear. Looks like the first one is going to be really easy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Completely forgot it's a rear wheel drive on uh, comfort tires. So, yes, my X is also uh, my X button is also switching on the wipers. That was cool. You got gold for finishing in first place. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 22902. Doesn't tell me anything. Uh, actually, I don't can see what was... Uh, oh, no, there wasn't a time. There was just overtake all three. Okay, good. Done. Oh, and I'm first. That's nice as well. Um, okay. Um, exit. I think that was the only one I had to do uh, to achieve uh, the requirement for the next menu book. Yeah, it was enough for now, at least. So there are a few things happening here. Uh, first of all, new parts can now be purchased. Okay, so that's probably related to the extreme stuff. So you've upgraded your collector level. That's great to hear. All right, Quelksus. Now I can sell you extreme parts. A nitrous system will allow you to hit tremendous speeds with ease. Oh, wow, they added nitrous into Gran Turismo. And while a new engine or a new body will require you to forfeit your current tuning parts, it will also increase the life of your car so that 
it will feel brand new. You will need this to get your favorite car back in peak form. Of course, it's not cheap, so weigh your options first. Let's have a look at the extreme. So what do we have here? We have new engine, a new body. Okay. Can I, what, what? I remember that from one of the previous Gran Turismo games. This is a brand new standard body. Ah, oh, standard, okay. Switching to it will remove anywhere and tear from your car body. As it's brand new body, it will also remove any weight reduction mods. <laughs> Just like a lot of money. Uh, intermediate and racing wets, heavy, heavy wet racing wets, okay. Four wheel steering controller, steering angle adapter, hydraulic handbrake, that's for drifting, I guess. Carbon ceramic brake kit. Interesting that doesn't add anything to this car if I would change to those. Um, and the nutrition, 100,000. Okay, that's expensive. Cool. I do not feel the need of doing any of those now. Nice work. How did you find your first mission? It was cool. The pass is a fun challenge, but there are plenty of other races for you to try your hand at as well. I've also heard that you can win cars if you earn all bronze or all gold prizes on each mission section. Which reminds me, are you a reward? Go ahead and grab it. I hope those are not my rewards. Those were my rewards, really? I hope he burns in hell. Book number 14, Muscle Cars. No, Mustangs. Mustangs History, 6971 and the new one from 15. Track Unlock, Daytona International Speedway. Okay, learn more about this. For this menu, you will be collecting Mustangs. Nice. Mustangs are always nice. The Mustang series of high performance cars were produced by Ford and is widely considered an American classic. It definitely is. Collect all three models and bring them back here. Then I'll tell you all about these legendary cars. I think I'll listen this time. I oh, always listen, joking. So let's see what I have to do to get these lovely Mustangs. And what car do I have to use to get that Mustang? So all three will be in America. Blue Moon Bay Speedway and WeatherTech Racewell Laguna Seca. Uh, I'll be doing that as last because I love this truck. Oh, this is a try of all. Boring, boring. So what do I have? To, I need a car with FR and from United States of America. Do I have a car like that? I do. I have that Corvette, which is 444 performance rating. And what is the supposed requirement? 550. That car is not ready. But you know what? I'll give it a try. At least, uh, wait, what tires? I've got Comfort tires. If I, at least I had better tires than that. Yeah, no, I need to upgrade the car. Um, I don't think that car is capable of winning anything. At current stage, of course. So I don't want to overspend. No, I don't want racing tires. Let's be realistic and not go crazy. So I want I want dirt tires. It's in sport. I want sport softs this time. That's quite an improvement straight away. Uh, <clears throat> I want good brakes, though I won't be using brakes much, right? Not on the three of all. <laughs> let's just go something cheap. Uh, let's get this computer. Yeah, nice. That's five to two. Uh, we can actually try to get the racing filter. It's not expensive. Five to four. Not a big improvement. How much? What kind of improvement gives me the, the cheaper sport L filter? Oh, barely noticeable. Mm. Okay, I definitely want better brakes. Um, 5,000 each, okay. How about going with this one? 530, that's a good improvement, I have to say. And let's get 
A good racing brake pads for that. Here we go. That wasn't expensive. And the racing air filter. How about the suspension? Sport suspension. Height adjustable sport suspension. Okay. And there is also racing, so 20,000. No, thank you very much. That's what? That's 5,000. Uh, and this one is three and a half, and it's not adjustable. And you know what? I'll take it. Okay, cool. That was power restrictor than need that. How much is weight reduction? And do I need it? Quite a big improvement. Uh, yeah, I get the sports sensor as well. Why not too? Did I get the racing filter? I did. So what would be the change if I switch to this one? Okay. I think I am ready at that stage to try some American muscle racing. Okay, so let's look at Laguna Seca. That's the Mach. Mach 1 or whatever, and then Willow Spring is that new beautiful Ford Mustang from 2015. I'll go with this one, I'll try this one. There's less straights, um, more corners, probably will be even harder. <laughs> oh, there's a guy to talk to, Felix. Hey there, how's it going? My name is Antonio Felix from the USA. I love Chevrolets, which I suppose runs in the family. After all, my dad owns a 1966 El Camino and a 1964 Impala. Today we'll be racing at Willow Springs, right? Right. At first glance, it might look like we're in a burnt dry desert, but apparently it does rain here once a decade. Nice. Apparently the track turns completely green when it happens. I would love to see it one day. Well, worst case scenario, we have to wait 10 years. That's pretty crazy, to be honest. I think I almost have a feeling it's overdone. Like, F force feedback doesn't announce that in any way, it just happens. I didn't feel that in any other game. Like, I have experience in Asta Corsa. Asta Corsa competition, a very little, but still. A lot of experience in Project Cars 1 and 2. And I've never had a chance to experience such a sudden kick. It almost makes me scary to to use that accelerator. Sometimes I can just press it and I don't have to worry about anything. Wow, man, come on, just give me some space. And a second later, doing the same, it's just going to break my neck. Oh, the lights came on. Like here, I'm not going full throttle because I'm just scared. Like how crazy was it breaking? I barely pressed that pedal. I have quite a hard setting for my load cell I think 20 okay I made I made I will make it 30 actually it wasn't as hard as I thought it was but still it felt pretty crazy last time I spun here so I was much more careful with the accelerator this time three seconds to the first one I'm fourth so three more cars to overtake Hopefully I can make this one by the end of this corner. Oh, he, he touched me there. Three seconds and I'm not, uh, I'm not gaining enough. That's Viper there in the first place. Quite a beast.
I don't think I have a car good enough to cut up the Viper. I think I'll have enough power to go to the... No, I don't have enough power to go to the second. Oh, just barely, just before the finish line. <laughs> so cool, so cool. That car is quite hard to drive. Um, braking and accelerating can be a bitch. And can kick you for a slightest mistake. Uh, I have a feeling I want to try again. I really want to try to win against that Viper. Uh, I think that was enough to get that Mustang. I could switch to Mustang. That's probably much easier to drive. Uh, and I will use that Mustang for other races, but I will try that race again in that Corvette, just because it's such a cool car. Okay, let's see if I can win this this time. I was very close, it was, uh, what, 700, 7 tenths of a second, I mean. No, don't do it to me. Stay on the bloody truck. What an ass. Stay on the right, where you are, where's your place, or where your place is, be accurate, okay, I can see the Viper there, so the Viper is not starting in P1 and it has to overtake quite a lot of cars to get there I guess. Okay, I have a feeling that was a good first lap. <laughs> it was definitely a good first lap. Don't know how that compares to my previous uh, attempt. I'm not sure what I'm chasing, but that thing is 2.5 seconds in front. I think it's a Mustang, but I may be wrong, it doesn't say. No, he's driving Chevrolet, so maybe it's Camaro. But Felix, Felix said that he, life, he loves Chevrolets, right? You see, I was listening. It was Camaro, Z28. So in theory, now should be an easy drive to the finish line, but I don't want to jinx it, because that car is unpredictable to some degree. That's what I'm talking about. It is unpredictable. <laughs> But this time it was a win with a rather safe advantage over the second. Yeah, one can definitely get used to a car. 
uh, and that Kamara was second. That Viper was nowhere this time, and the Mustang overtook it as well. Cool. I was pretty sweet win, and some credits I'm going to need. Let me just check something on my computer. I need to close something here. And I need to drop a video to my YouTube archive, which I downloaded from... Quickly do it, okay, we can exit from here. Oh, the video is uploading. Cool, so we also have Laguna Seca, and I think I'll give it a try in that Corvette as well. They're all, I spent some money on it. So, no further changes, it's the same as it was. My assumption is I'll be starting from third gear, yeah. That was a good assumption. Now, I'm curious if this is a first or second gear corner. I'll be doing it on the second for now. I don't want to crush the Mustang. Oh, come on, man, go to the left, you have enough space. That's a Hamilton move. Oh, that's the super beard, that funny spoiler. <laughs> I always found that uh, quite ugly. And that's the Corvette second generation, I think. Yeah, C2. I'm in the C3. It's looking good so far. I love the truck. seconds uh, I don't think I'll be able to do it if there were a free laps on the track then maybe it's the Viper at the first place again so the stars did not align for me this time 4.4 seconds It wasn't as I planned it, but you know what, I'm still driving. Oh, I think that's the guy I should be talking before racing. I'm actually come back just to see what he has to say. 2.3 seconds. Sorry man, but I'll be attacking, I have to be aggressive. If I want to win this, because that the guy in the Dodge is driving away. I locked the wheels there just for a moment. Managed to release that accelerator um, in the brake pedal just enough to, to get the traction back into the wheels. Sorry, man, but I'm not sorry for you. You have such a great car and you'll be okay being second. And that's why I always believe that Corvette is a superior car to Dodge Viper. Change my mind. Though I'll be completely honest that when the Vipers were racing in Le Mans, in the Oreca, as an Oreca team, I, I love them and preferred over the Corvette. 
It's a shame that that car is not being manufactured anymore. It was one of kind with that 8.3 liter engine. Cool, a nice win, a clean race bonus, everything uh, one can dream about. So I have two out of three, and then for the third race I won't be using that car anymore because it's just not nice to drive it on the tri oval. So for the tri oval I'll be changing to the new Mustang. Um, okay, so one thing I want to check actually, I want to go back here in a moment. My apology for wasting everyone's time. I want to see if I can talk to that Solis guy. I'll be racing a Dodge Viper today. I really like the aggressive styling with the distinctive long nose. Laguna Saka race was famous for its corkscrew turn. Taking the corner, its speed feels just like riding a roller coaster. Be sure to brake before you enter the turn, though otherwise you might find yourself flying off the truck. And that really is all I wanted to, to do here. Uh, I already won it, no point. So the last one is Blue Moon Bay Speedway, the try of all I was... And the change is going to be... Um, I want to bring it to 450. So I'm going to buy the softs. That's already 461. Okay, maybe that's going to be enough. I'm just going to buy the softs. And I'm going to try the try of all again. In that beautiful Ford Mustang. Beautiful sounding. 5 liter V8. More beautifully sounding. Relapse. I should have been braking a bit earlier. seconds to the first one. Six seconds to the first one. I'm still struggling when it comes to the grip. Five second to the first one. Four seconds to the first one. That's the Viper. Car, definitely, and that's is it the Camaro on the first in the first place? It is Camaro. Okay, the soft tires uh, make the difference, definitely. But after I went to the race second time, and you know, after coming out of the race, going to the menu, going into the race, uh, the layout of opponents and how they start on the grid might have changed as well, and that also makes a difference.
And the third lap, when I'm not chasing anyone, seems to be much more smoother. And the time showed it as well, that was the fastest lap, the last one. It blinked too fast to actually tell um, what it was. Does it show here? 54.8 against 55 point something. Not sure what it was previously, but it's a win and that's what I wanted. Clear that event with a win. Okay, and that's the third car. I've got all three, all three Mustangs acquired. Actually, I like the first one. Mach 1, I was never fan of it. It doesn't look as good as the 69 Mustang. And obviously the new one is beautiful. They missed a few Mustangs on the way to the newest one. Racing helmet. Oh, so I can start winning those as well. Maybe I should have a look at that. Uh, Gear setup. Done. Done and dusted. Let's go back to the cafe and have a co Actually, I could have a coffee. It's only 9 p.m. So I'll take a short break. I'll make myself a coffee. And I'll be right back to continue the adventure with Gran Turismo 7. Perfect. And here I am back with my nice black Americana coffee. Mm, smells great. Really good coffee. I'm actually curious, one thing which I want to check. So I was driving the Mustang as a as a manual gearbox, but I'm just curious if it's not sequential, just with the stick. First of all, let's clear those American cars I just got. Mm. This one, this one, and this one. Now, does it tell fix like that? The sixth generation of tanks. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing there. It would be great if they providing information like that. Maybe in this this screen. Displacement. Drivetrain, max power, max torque, weight. Oh no, you can see here in the interior there's an H stick. Cool. That's cool. So I was I was driving it as a shoot. That clears it. Um, nice interior in the red. Black and red. Uh, okay, back to cafe. Let's clear this uh, reward. Mustang complete. Next. Congratulations. You've got all three cars. This completes your Mustang collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. Daytona International Speedway. Iconic truck. Um, Chris guy showed up. I'm going to first listen to him. The Ford Mustang has been celebrated as a legendary American sports car even since it hit the market in 1964. Ever since, not even. One look at this exceptional seventh generation model will have you shouting Mustang for sure. It is. Actually, yes, I would love to have it. Incorporating the essence of its forebears. It boasts a proud lineage, lineage without relying too heavily on overly retro elements. Without a doubt, the star of its engine lineup is the V8 mounted in this GT. For a car with plenty of muscle, its price is really quite reasonable. In US, in UK, it's £47,000. 
less reasonable suddenly. Doable still though. You can talk about American sports car without mentioning the Ford Mustang. The first generation Mustang from 1964 has a very special place in motoring history. It made a debut at the World's Fair in New York and within a month over 100,000 orders has been placed. Because it was a really nice car. Compared to other American cars of the time, the Mustang was relatively small but had a powerful compact design. The Boss 429 was built to compete in the US immensely popular NASCAR races, and that was an amazing car. While the legendary GT350, I think that's what Eleanor was based on, right? Was developed in collaboration with the American racing driver Carl Shelby. There aren't many cars which boast over half of a century of history over numerous generations. And the Mustang remains just as much of an icon of American motoring today as it did when it first launched. Menu book number 15, Collection Camaro. So we're going uh, the other side of the barricade. SS from 16, so that's the newest one. Z28 from 69, that will be the first one, and the ZL1 1LE package, so it's that extra power one. Recommended car, Camaro, which I'm just about to going to win. How is this? How is this? This is stupid, right? I should be designing a way that should be showing recommended car from those I have. That would be so much better. Now that you've got yourself a Mustang collection, I would like you to move on to collecting Camaros. The Camaro is another high-performance classic produced by General Motors Chevrolet brand. It traces its history back to the rise of the American muscle car in the 1960s. Collect all three models and come back to see me, I'll be waiting. Okay, we have Mustangs, let's move to Camaros. I'll be doing that in the Mustang, I guess. It's ready, it's beautiful, and I'm more than happy to drive it. Ah. <laughs> That's stupid truck again. Okay, uh, try over it is. Uh, Willow Springs International Speedway, that's cool, that's cool. And Daytona International, oh, that's such a beautiful truck. A 24 hours Daytona races just on this one, and that's more than enough. With the a new, well, the chicane is not new, but the name is new, Le Mans chicane rather than the Daytona chicane, uh, rather than the bus stop chicane. They changed it this year. Let's, tie, let's start with the tri oval this time. Let's get rid of it. And let's do it in the Mustang we have. Oh, one thing I want to do, which I forgot to do, is to listen to this guy and have to do it again in for the Mustang because I forgot. Hola! My name is uh, Augustin Cajal and I've come all the way from Argentina to race. Or Cajal, it depends how we look at it, right? Argentines are enthusiastic, passionate and good-hearted. You won't find other people like us in the whole world. Today we'll be racing in American muscle cars, machines which are all about power. They are. Of course, the powerful the, the powerful the car, the harder it is to keep under control, so be sure to use tires with plenty of grip. I'm not going racing, I'm sticking to my tires and to to my assists, which for that car I'm taking, keeping the ABS. Oh, at least I'm not doing triable. I'm doing something more than that. Is it Focus? Hello, Focus. close. Oh, and at least I'm doing three laps as well. 
not just two. I was breaking too late. I was lucky I made that corner. Oh, but I'm a little bit this one. That was second gear corner. Especially the exit of it. I'm trying to guess what gear to use. This is real this is real life track, so at least I cannot complain. I should just learn it. That's the Kajal guy, or uh, Kahal. Whoa, sorry mate. I might have put that third gear too early. Also, because I'm driving with ABS, I forgot to soften my load cell and I'll do it in a moment just as soon as I get to the straight. Here we go. That should be better now for braking. Much better. <laughs> now I stop too early. I'm on final lap. I better make it count. Nice. Nice win in a nice car. Oh, that coffee is so good. Strong black coffee. That's what I needed, the taste of it. Interestingly enough, those uh, Camaros were nowhere close to the podium. Well, they were close to the podium. That's only because there were 10 cars here. <laughs> anyway, they were better than Mustangs though. Well, besides mine. Good, good money. And the price uh, extra bonus was there. Cool. Always good to see that. And I got this one. Oh, that's beautiful. I saw it from the best one. I wish I had a white one with... Uh, a carbon uh, hood. I will be pretty good. Level up. I want to be driving this thing. So, Mustang is cool, but that Camaro looks sick. There's one thing I wanted to check, right? And it was... Uh, what 
the guy had to say in this free lapper which I did for the Mustang. I'm just going to jump in for a second. And I'm going to listen to Rubilar. Hola, I'm Nicolas Rubilar. I've come all the way from Chile to race in the United States. Chile is a very long country running along the west coast of South America and it's home to the Ants. My preferred type of music is trash metal and the US is home to many of my favorite bands. I then ac accident accidentally, incidentally, are you familiar with a technique called slipstreaming? It's also known as drafting in the US. It involves using the car in front of you as a barrier to reduce the wind resistance on your own car. It's best used on long straights, as you might imagine. Why not give it a try in today's race? Okay, that's all what I wanted to, to do. I feel that if I don't do it, I'm missing part of the game, right? Um, and I don't want to miss part of the game. So, the next one will be Willow Springs. Willow Springs. Uh, that's actually 600. So my Mustang is underperforming. Well, it's not underperforming. It's performing great, but its power performance or point performance points are way below 600. So I'm happy I was able to win the previous one. Uh, I'm going to change the car and I'm going to jump into that beast, which is 620 performance points, and it looks sick. And uh, I'm going to drive that around the. Uh, Springs. The question is what tires I have in that car. Probably sports hard, my guess would be. Uh, car settings sports medium. Okay, that's better. That's better. And uh, assist, we're going with everything as a modern car would have. The only thing I don't know what kind of gearbox sits in the car. Uh, is there a way to check in detailed car settings? I wish they were saying that some, somewhere. It would be such a good thing to have. Um, transmission, just as normal, doesn't say anything else. Normal tells me nothing. Um, it's such a shame. I have to check while, while, uh, while I'm, I'll be racing. Let's uh, listen to Bader. Hello, my name is uh, Benjamin Bader. I'm from Hungary. My apology if I'm pronouncing, uh, I'm mispronouncing his last name. Uh, I've loved Ford ever since I was a kid, when my dad would drive me around in his Orion. Now, throttle control is very important when you're driving a powerful car. In particular, on the final corner of this track, it's very important that you don't let your, your racing line bulge out. Okay, good. I know that already, or I knew that already. So much fun. Okay, that car is going, it's my new favorite car in GT7, from all the cars I have. Screw the Mustang, that Camaro is winning. I like the dashboard. A straight lines, they very. I look really cool. Are up to the badass look of this car. <laughs> what a beast that car is! I'm losing out of time sliding around. I have the power on straights, that's for sure. But I'm struggling in corners with that power. That power is actually a curse on those tires. Those tires are not ready for 600 horsepower or whatever there is. I think it was 600. Okay, I can see it shows in miles uh, the speed itself on the dashboard, but my wheel should show me Q1. 
kilometers per hour. I'm doing 144 at the moment in this corner. For those of you who are not familiar with Fanatec, the display is right here. Shows me the gear when I change it and shows me the speed of the car. That guy is all over the truck. He's got out of power as well. What is it, DeLorean? Are they crazy? DeLorean in the first place? Is he going to travel in time? Oh, I had a gear issue again. 200 kilos per hour, 220, 230, 240. There's definitely power in that car. I want to see the wipers. Okay, nothing special. <laughs> Very wide in that corner. Nice slide. Oh, I'm enjoying this car. 240 while crossing the line. It looks sick. Every bit of it. The front, the rear, the side. The camera is so huge as well. Such a beautiful beast. Two in one. Beautiful and the beast in one. A DeLorean is just funny being there on... <laughs> the P2. It was such a crap car. Uh, yeah, whatever. I enjoyed that uh, Camaro. I'm so glad I'm going to drive it as well on uh, Daytona. I'm tempting to put a racing tires on it to have the, all the grip required, but uh, it would be unfair. I would have such an advantage. That's the other Camaro. SS. It's a nice car as well, but nowhere close to that uh, L1. That's why I'm driving. That's why I'm going to drive the L1. It's all about the looks. Okay, so we have one last left. Daytona International Speedway, and we will be driving the infield version of the truck, uh, the 24 hours uh, version of the truck. With the horseshoe. Uh, oh, I want to drive that. Oh, I don't have a car. <laughs> uh, cool. Let's do some. Why is it showing me the oval? I don't want to drive on the on the tri, tri oval. Please no. Tri oval is boring. Well, at least I have a car powerful enough to drive on the tri oval. But still, hopefully, I will be driving on the on the infield truck on a 24 hours truck. Rolling start, number of laps free. No, we'll be driving Trioval. Ah, such a shame. Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. I won't, I'm not going to complain. Let's see how much power I have in that car on the Trioval. 
Was it? Was it really Tesla? <laughs> Shouldn't it be faster? It's Tesla, right? It probably would run out of the power. Oh, I've got six gear. Do I have a seventh? No, I don't have a seventh gear. Only have six. And I'm glad I checked. Whoa! He twitched to right. That wasn't good. I have too much power. Seriously. They are without chance. Oh, maybe the first guy is, has some running chances for a win. I'm doing 315 kilometers per hour at the moment in that car. Effortlessly. Join the 200 miles per hour club. Lovely. 327, 28. For those of you who prefer kilometers per hour. I'm catching with, what is it? Is it another uh, Camaro? It is. 27, 28, 29, 330. What a beast of a car. Those tires are not good enough for the speeds. I'm pretty sure that sports medium shouldn't be used at speeds of 330 kilometers per hour. And the racing tires would do much better. We've got one more lap. And I'm pulling away easily. I would love to do a uh, Isma 500 uh, in this game if there is uh, something like that available with pit stops and everything. Pit stops and everything, but with manual pit stops like in Project Cars 2 or uh, Asta Corsa Competizione. Seven seconds advantage just by keeping the accelerator all the way down to the ground. I'm dropping the hammer, as Tom Cruise said in Days of Thunder while testing a NASCAR car. My favorite Tom Cruise movie, just because it's about cars. And we're crossing the finish line. That was effortless. In that car, it couldn't be any different. 330 kilometers per hour I was doing at one stage. By a country mile, so I earned two trophies here, and I want to check what they are. Uh, by a country mile, the first one was joining the 200 miles per hour, um, so I was just driving fast enough, not a big thing to do. The other one is, I guess, it's to have the advantage over the second at the finish line. But I'm curious what that advantage has to be. And I'm going to quickly have a look. So the second uh, achievement was to win with an advantage of at least 10 seconds in a race with two or more laps. So all the requirements were met and that happened. Oh, actually, was there a guy to listen to? I'm just checking I won't be racing again. There was Felix. My love for Chevrolet isn't just inherited from my father. Seeing heroic NASCAR racers like Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt made a big impact too. Yeah, okay, that's it. Was it Dale Earnhardt who died because he wasn't using, he refused to use the hands? I think he was, not 100% sure. Uh, but I think that was Dale. There were two in hearts, right? Son and father. One of them, I think it was. <clears throat> Congratulations! You've got all three cars. This completes your Camaro collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. The shitty roulette is back again. Let's listen to him. Oh, let's listen to me reading what he has to say. Chevrolet is one of American manufacturer General Motors' most storied brands. Its legendary Camaro sports car first appeared in 1966, and it's famous for its long rivalry with Ford Mustang. Along with the Mustang, the Camaro was one of the stars of the Trans Am races of the 1960s. In fact, the first generation Z20, Z28 Camaro was 
fitted with an engine specially designed for the trans arm races. Or Z28, some people say, uh, well, actually, some countries said Z, some countries said Z. The fifth generation Camaro debuted in 2006 and became very popular after appearing in a series of films. The sixth generation Z, ZL11 LE made waves after posting a Nurburgring lap time that was worthy of a supercar. Oh, this is a supercar. It's a 330 km per hour car. As you can see, therefore, the Camaro remains a much loved and so after classic even after all these years. And I'm not surprised at all. Take a photo of your car in escapes. I knew they'll do that. Let's listen to Chris, what he has to say about the Camaro. The sixth generation ZL1 may be the most valuable Camaro of all time. Taking its engine from the Corvette Z06, the ZL1 is capable of an output of 141 brake horsepower. And that is a lot. What's more, this 1LE package has been outfitted for truck performance needs. Incredibly, it completed a lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife in 7 minutes, 16 seconds. Point. That's amazing. That really is. That's a supercar level time, mind you. And yet it's about one third the price of your average supercar, meaning it offers more bank for your buck. It does. Another menu book, and this one is to take a scapes photo, and I think this is going to be the last thing I'm going to do for today. Have you visited the scapes pavilion yet? Well, not in GT7, I did in GTS. It's a heaven for travel lovers where you can take photos of your favorite cars in all sorts of locations. Your goal for this menu is to try out some of the scapes features for yourself. Head over to scapes and select a spot that calls to you. Take a nice photo, then come back here and see me. Happy snapping. Let's go and snap a little. Well, I didn't click start, did I? Is he going to say the same thing again? I, I click start, not learn more, right? Oh, come on. I feel stupid now. Yeah, okay. So he repeated himself after me clicking learn more and then start. It's the same thing. First of all, let's go to the garage and clear uh, those. Oh, yeah. Get the lowest possible reward. That would be... That wouldn't be a surprise at all. I haven't got anything better than the lowest uh, reward. Take a look. It's slowing towards the lowest reward. Gran Turismo, or actually Polyphon Digital. You are, and I would drop a C bomb here if I wasn't civilized. But you are C guys. Seriously, all of you. You rigged that game of roulette. And I have to say, I like your game, but I hate you guys, really. You are whoever programmed the algorithm responsible for the roulette. You are one hell of a mother effer, seriously. Amazing, that car is amazing, it really is. Okay, cool, I cleared all of them, right? I don't think I've got anything else there to clear. Let's go to the scapes, uh, missions, scapes. Random picks, let's why not choose random pick. Uh, that looks good. Batman Avenue Bridge, seriously? That thing is called Batman Avenue Bridge in Australia? I love it. Whoever came out with the idea is brilliant. Why? Ah, okay, so the random pick is actually just going straight to Australia. Yeah, I have nothing against Australia. Uh, and I love the name of Batman Avenue Bridge. So, yeah, let's place that Camaro there. Um, I would place the Mustang as well. Why not too? Though it's not as good as that Camaro, just because it's a normal versus, you know, Performance beast. I need my. I need my. I need to remove those. I won't be needing them anymore today. I'm uh, finishing for today after I take this. After I snap. Uh, 
But I need my controller for that. It's really hard to do it on the wheel. It's actually impossible to do it on the wheel. For example, I cannot turn the car on the wheel. Yeah, let's block that. Here we go. That's what I want. Isn't it cool? Have them like that? I think it is. Um, so what do they add it here? Travel speed. Do you want to enable panning shot settings? You can change this option at any time by selecting panning shot settings in camera. Yes, I want. So I can make them look like they driving actually. Why right? my pad vibrates every single time I click something? Like it doesn't add to anything that vibration is useless. <laughs> Let's put the low bin on. It looks nice and it's kind of, I think it looks like it's early morning. Uh, we won't be breaking. We won't be turning. Dust. Where does it add the dust? On the car? No, my cars are perfectly clean. No oil stains. No, who adds things like that? Wow, okay. That's, uh, that's brake dust. You can actually add a brake dust. That would be cool on a racing car for sure, but not on, a, on this one. Key lights, what's that? Like. Ah, daytime running lights. Okay, that's what it calls. Key lights, really? That's how it's called? I didn't know. Ah, okay, those are the lights which you put on when you put the key into the car. Okay. <laughs> Real lights. Why it switch on? Okay. Yeah, let's put driver. I wish you could have a driver without a helmet. It looks stupid on the car driving on the... I don't want this. Driving on the road. Uh, I want the headlights. Low beam. Thank you. Let's change to the Camaro and do the same. So we're traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. Not too fast, right? Speed limit and all. Let's put the lights on. Um, yeah, no dirt and stuff. Uh, Oh, this one doesn't have a fog light. It's interesting. But I want a driver. The car is driving after all. Doesn't have to be me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is plenty of options here. I don't want, I'm not sure I want to play with them right now. Um, the only thing planning shot settings on target is on the Camaro. Camera tracking rate 90%. Well, let's keep it simple. See how it actually like that so we actually power there just the building no, more focus on the cars. Yeah, like that. Oh, wow. That's actually, it looks interesting. Uh, save it. Yeah, why not? Uh, don't share it. Let's slow down those cars. Uh, half the speed. And let's try to create less blur and see how it's going to look like this time. It's quite blurry, isn't it? That Mustang is... Uh... No, don't save this time. Uh, let's actually switch it off. Let's try with 100%. No. Uh, let's switch it off. Turn now. Okay. Cool. So taking picture of two cars, uh, it doesn't work uh, that well. Save it for now. One more thing I want to try. If I can go back to Mustang, 
and put it alongside that Camaro. Like that. Here we go. That looks sweet. And then I can enable this thing. Uh, I put them at 50 kilometers per hour. The focus is on the Camaro. Let's change the focus to the Mustang for now. Let's change it back to 90% and take the photo. Okay, so the Mustang is a bit more blurred at the moment. It looks quite cool. Save the photo. Oh, that's it. I don't want anything else. Do you want to return to the spot select screen? Yes, please. Let's uh, collect the reward from the cafe. Well done. Are you happy with the photo you took? I don't know. Not for me to judge myself. Uh, whenever you take a good shot, be sure to share it. Okay. You can see the photos that everyone shared by visiting the showcase. Well, it's fun to compete with other drivers in sport and multiplayer modes. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to swap your favorite photos. Now, I suppose I would better give you your reward. Go ahead, it's all yours. Okay, and let's just have a quick look what's uh, next in the menu. It's a Trial Mountain Cup Championship. Um, okay, Trial Mountain Cup. They're saying the Corvette is a perfect car for this. The Corvette is uh, just below 600 pp. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Uh, that's Fuji International Speedway and Autopolis as a uh, truck switch unlock. For this menu, I would like you to go to the World Circuit and enter the Trial Mountain Cup. The race will take place in the middle of the National Park, surrounded by the wondrous American wide wilderness. It's a race that requires quite a lot of skill, as such, you need to hold a National A license in order to enter. If you don't hold a National A license yet, head to the License Center. Coquella Pes will talk you through the tests. Once you've earned your National A license, you can head over to World Circuits. Your aim is to finish in the top three. Everyone in the cafe will be rooting for you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, the next step is to go to the license center. That will be tomorrow. Which is, uh, which is why there's, uh, that looks like a postcard there, right? Or a letter. Letter of confidence. Uh, you have an invitation. What does it even mean? Lamborghini. Okay, that's my favorite brand in Europe. What are they inviting me to? Um, to the showroom. Okay, fair enough. Invitation expires uh, in a month. More or less. Martin, you've received an invitation. This gives you a time-limited opportunity to buy a very special car. Head over to the showroom to see what's available. So, what is that special car I can buy? Obviously, I would love to buy this one. This is Emil Frey design, and this is actually based on a real library from racing car. Oh, that's the one which doesn't exist, but it was created for uh, Gran Turismo. So it's another VGT, Vision GT bullshit. It exists as a shell, doesn't, it doesn't drive though. They created a shell of that car. Uh, Veneno, I can buy Veneno for 3.6 million credits. How stupid is that? So how is this invitation benefiting me in any way? So if I click it, you have an invite to it allows you to purchase this special car. What does it mean? It allows me to purchase. So does it mean if that I cannot buy it without an invite or is it just a scam? Did they implement it as scam in Gran Turismo? Like if you have an invitation to buy this car, but if you don't have it, you can still buy it. Um, ah, no. So. It has a, I don't know there's a free version of the co of color versions. White one is kind of not that well visible. Red is fast. 
green. I like green. I, somehow the Lamborghini looks good in the green in, with green. But red is red. Excuse me. Well, I'm not. I don't have 3.6 million credits. That was so stupid. What a stupid invitation. What can I do there? Add to a wish list. That was the stupidest invitation ever. Like, come buy a car you don't have money for. That could be only done in Gran Turismo. Uh, okay. That's it for it, folks, for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I wish you good evening, afternoon. It depends where you are, I guess. Good night. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So, good night.